say genuine well wishes and all and thanks i take it for granted that you and your beloved ones are in fine feather it is activist come teacher rosa yesterday's back with absolute delight for my 60th video in pipeline for publication on youtube today 11th of august 2020 topic for discussion today is pros and cons of online education plus effectiveness the efficiency is a ratio of getting the maximum output for the input expended effectiveness is efficiency oriented towards attaining the desired outcomes goals objectives coaching is a form of development in which an experienced person called a coach supports a learner or client in achieving a specific personal personal or professional goal by actually providing training and guidance the learner is sometimes called a coachy occasionally coaching may uh, mean an informal relationship between two people of one whom one has more experience and expertise than the other and offers advice and guidance as a later learn there is a learner learn but coaching differs from mentoring by focusing on specific tasks or objectives as opposed to more general goals or overall development learning occurs one and only only if there is two way interaction between the learner also known as student disciple shishya and the learn also known as teacher tutor guru there are various types of coaching depending on applications or purpose homework coaching focuses on equipping uh, equipping a student with the study skills required to successfully succeed academically the approach is different from regular tutoring which typically seeks to improve a student's performance in a specific subject coaching is applied to support students faculty and administrators in educational organizations for students opportunities for coaching include collaborating with fellow students to improve grades and skills both academic and social for teachers social for teachers and administrators coaching can help the transition in to new roles distance education or distance learning is education of students who may not always be physically present at a school traditionally this usually involve correspondence courses where the student corresponded with the school via post today it involves online education a distance learning program can be completely distance learning or a combination of distance learning and traditional classroom instruction called hybrid or blended massive open online courses m moc offering large scale interactive participation and open access through the world wide web or other network technologies are recent, recent educational modes in distance education the number of other terms distributed learning e learning m learning online learning virtual classroom etc are used roughly synonymously with the uh, distance education the first uh, distance education course in the modern sense was provided by sir isaac pitman in the 1840s who taught a system of shortened by mailing text transcribed into shortened on postcards and receiving transcriptions from his students in return for correction the element of student feedback was a crucial innovation in pitman system the first correspondence school in the united states was a society to encourage studies at home which was founded in 1873 founded in 1894 Colstein Hall, Oxford was the first distance learning college in the UK. So this is not something new. The University of London was the first university to offer distance learning degrees. They established its external program in 1858 education was a high priority in the progressive era as american high schools and colleges expanded greatly for men who were older or were too busy with the family responsibilities high schools were opened such as ymca school in boston that became northeastern university outside the big cities private correspondence schools offered a flexible narrowly focused solution large corporations systematized their training program for the new employee only a third of the american population lived in cities of 100,000 or more population in 1920 to reach the rest 
corresponding courses have to be adopted, had to be adopted. The International Correspondence Conference for Con Correspondence Education held its first meeting in 1938. The goal was to provide individualized education for students at mm -hmm. low cost by using a pedagogy of testing, recording, classification and differentiation. The organization has since been renamed as International Council for Open and uh, Distance Education with headquarters in Oslo, Norway. The Open Re University revolution the scope of a correspondence program and helped to create a respectable learning and alternative to, alternative to the traditional form of education. It has been at the forefront of developing new technologies to improve the distance learning service as well as undertaking research in uh, other disciplines. The COVID-19 pandemic resulted in the closure of a vast majority of schools worldwide, many schools moved to online remote learning via platforms including Zoom, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, D2L, and EdgeUnity. Concerns arose over the impact of this transition of students on students without access to an internet-enabled device or stable internet connection. Internet technology has enabled many forms of distance learning through open educational resources and uh, facilities such as e-learning and MOOC. Although the expansion of the internet blurs the boundaries, distance education technologies are divided into two modes of delivery, synchronous learning and asynchronous learning. In synchronous learning, all participants are present at the same time in a virtual classroom as in traditional classroom teaching. It requires a timetable. Web conferencing, video conferencing, educational te television, instructional television are examples of synchronous technology as are direct broadcast satellites, internet radio, live streaming, telephone and web-based voice over internet protocol. Web conferencing software helps to facilitate class meetings and usually contains additional interaction tools such as text to chat, polls, hand raising, emoticons, etc. These tools also support asynchronous participation by students who can present the recordings of synchronous sessions. Immersive environments have also been used to enhance participant presence in distance education courses. Another form of synchronous learning using the classroom is the use of robo proxies. Proxies in distance learning, okay including those that allow six students attend classes. Some universities have been starting to use robo proxies to enable more engaging synchronous hybrid classes where both remote and, and in-person students can be present and interact with the tele-robotics devices such as Scooby telepresence robo stand that looks around and uh, double robo that roams around. With these telepresence robots, the remote students have a seat at the table or desk instead of being on a screen or otherwise. In asynchronous learning, participants access course materials flexibly on their own schedule. Students are not required to be together at the same time. Mail correspondence, which is the oldest form of distance education, is an asynchronous delivery technology, as are message board forums, email, video and audio recordings, print materials, voicemail and fax. The two methods can be combined. Many courses offered by both universities and uh, open universities and an increasing number of campus-based institutions use periodic sessions of residential or day teaching to supplement the sessions delivered at a distance. This type of mixed distance and campus-based education has recently come to be called blended learning or hybrid learning. Many open universities use a blend of technologies and a blend of learning modalities. Distance learning can also use interactive radio instruction, interactive radio in audio instruction, online virtual worlds, digital games, webinars and webcasts, all of which are referred as e-learning. A radio as a master teacher was used experts in given fields broadcast lessons for pupils within the many classrooms of the public school system, asking questions, suggesting readings, making assignments and conducting tests. This mechanizes education and leaves the local teacher only the task of preparing for the bar broadcast and keeping order in the classroom. The widespread use of computers and the internet have made distance learning easier and faster and today virtual schools and virtual universities deliver full curricula all night. The capacity of internet to support voice, video, text and immersion teaching methods made easier distinct forms of telephone, video conferencing, radio, television and text-based education somewhat redundant. 
between 2000 and 2008, enrollment in distance education courses increased rapidly in almost every country in both developed and developing countries. Many private, public, non-profit and non-for-profit institutions worldwide now offer distance education courses from the most basic instruction through to the highest uh, levels of degree and uh, doctoral programs. Distance education has a long history. Internet forums, online discussion group, and online learning community can contribute to an efficacious distance education experience. The research shows that yet socialization plays an important role in some forms of distance education. Distance education can be delivered in a paced format similar to traditional campus-based models in which learners comments and complete a course at the same time. Paced delivery is currently the most common mode of distance education delivery. Alternatively, some institutions offer self-paced programs too that allow for continuous enrollment and the length of time to complete the course is set by the learner's time, skill and commitment levels. Paced courses may be offered in either synchronous mode but self-paced courses are always offered asynchronously. Time dependency and number of participants based distance education into four groups. MOOC, SPOC, small private online courses, Synchronous massive online courses, synchronous private online courses. These are the four groups. Online course that only offers a limited number of places and requires students to be present at the same time synchronously. Paced models are a familiar mode since they are used almost exclusively in campus-based school institutes. Schools institutes that offer both the distance and campus programs usually use paced models for the teacher workload, student semester planning, tuition, deadlines, exam schedules, and other administrative details can be synchronized with the campus delivery. Student familiarity and the presence of pressure of deadlines encourage students to readily adapt and to unusually succeed in paced models. Student freedom is sacrificed as a common pace is often too fast for some students and too slow for others. In addition, life events, professional or family responsibilities can interfere with the student's capability to complete tasks to an external schedule. Paced models allow students to really form communities of inquiry and to conduct engaged in collaborative work. Self-paced courses maximize student freedom as not only can students come and studies on any date, but they can complete a course in as little time as a few weeks or up to a year or longer. Fast track, slow track, everything is here. Students often enroll in self-paced study when they are under pressure to complete programs or not being able to complete a scheduled course, need additional courses or have pressure which precludes regular study for any length of time. The self-paced nature of the programming, though, is an unfamiliar model for many stu students and can lead to excessive procrastination, resulting in course incompletion and dropping out of it. Assessment of learning can also be challenging as exams can be written on any day, making it possible for students to share examination questions, cheating, with the resulting loss of academic integrity. It is extremely challenging to organize collaborative work activities, though some schools are developing co cooperative models based upon network and connective connectivist pedagogies for use in self-paced programs. Distance learning can expand access to education and training for both the general populace and businesses since its flexible scheduling structure lessens the effects of the many time constraints imposed by personal responsibilities and commitments. Devolving some activities off-site alleviates institutional capacity constraints arising from the traditional demand on institutional buildings and infrastructure. There is a potential for increased access to more experts in the field and to other students from diverse geographical, social, cultural, economic and experiential backgrounds. As the population at large becomes more involved in lifelong learning, beyond the normal schooling age, institutions can benefit financially and adult learning business courses may be practically lucrative. Distance education programs can act as a catalyst for institution and innovation and are at least as effective as face-to-face -face learning programs, especially if the instructor is knowledgeable and skilled. Distance education can also provide a broader method of communication within the realm of education 
with the many tools and programs the technological advance have to offer communication appears to increase in distance education among students and their professors as well as students and their classmates the distance education that increase in communication particularly communication among students and their classmates is an improvement that has been made to provide distance education students with as many of the opportunities as possible that they would receive in in person education the improvement being made in distance education is growing in tandem with the constant technological advancements present day online communication allows students to associate with accredited schools and programs throughout the world that are out of reach for in person learning by having the opportunity to be involved in global institutions via distance education a diverse array of thought is presented to students through communication with their classmates this is beneficial because students have the opportunity to combine new options with their own and develop a social foundation for learning learners become aware of the variations in interpretation and construction of meaning among a range of people construct an individual meaning that can help students become knowledgeable of a wide array of view points in education to increase the likelihood that students will build effective ties with one to another during the course instructors who should use similar assignments for students across different locations to overcome the influence of co-occupation on relationship building the high cost of education affects students in higher education to which distance education may be an alternate in order to provide some relief provided that the fees is lower Distance education has been a more cost-effective form of learning and can sometimes save students a significant amount of money as opposed to traditional education. Distance education may be able to help to save students from the economic burden of high-priced course or textbooks. Many textbooks are now available as electronic textbooks known as e-textbooks. that can offer digital textbooks for a reduced price in comparison to traditional textbooks also the increasing improvements in technology have resulted in many school libraries having a partnership with the digital publishers that offer course materials for a fee for free which can help students significantly with the educational cost within the class students are able to learn in ways that traditional classrooms would not be able to provide it is able to provide good learning experiences and therefore allow students to obtain higher satisfaction with their online learning students can review the lessons more often more than once according to their need students can then manipulate the class coursework to fit the learning by focusing more on the weaker topics while bracing through the concepts that are already that they have already have or can easily grasp when course design and the learning environment are at the opti- optimal conditions distance education can lead students to higher satisfaction with their learning experiences so high satisfaction correlates to increased learning for those in healthcare or mental health distance learning program online based instructions have the potential to foster deeper reflections and discussions of client issues as well as quicker response to client issues since supervision happens on a regular basis and is not limited to a weekly supervision meeting this may also contribute to the students are feeling a greater sense of support since they have on ongoing and regular access to the instructors and other students distance learning may enable students who are unable to attend a traditional school setting due to difficult disability or illness such as de- decreased mobility and immune system suppression to get a good education children who are sick or able unable to attend classes are able to attend them in person through the use of robo proxy this helps the students have experiences of the classroom and social interaction that they are unable to receive at home or the hospital while still keeping them in a safe learning environment for the last few years students are entering safely back into the classroom thanks to the help of robots distance education may provide equal access regardless of socio economic status or income area of residence gender race age or caste of student applying universal design student strategies to distance learning courses as they are being developed can increase the accessibility of such courses to students with a range of abilities disabilities learning styles and native languages distance education graduates who would never have 
been associated with the school under traditional system may donate money to the school. Distance learning may also offer a final opportunity for adolescents that are no longer permitted in the general education population due to behavior disorders. Instead of these students having no other academic opportunities, they may continue their education from their homes and earn their diploma, offering them another chance to be an integral part of society. Distance learning offers individuals a unique opportunity to benefit from the expertise and resources of the best universities currently available. Students have the ability to collaborate, question, share, infer, and suggest new methods and techniques for continuous improvement of the content. The ability to complete a course at a pace that is appropriate for each individual is the most effective manner to learn given the personal demands of time and schedule. Self-paced learn distance learning on a mobile device such as a smartphone provides maximum flexibility and capability. Barriers to effective distance education include obstacles such as domestic distractions and unreliable technology. So as well as students, program costs, adequate contact with the teachers and support services and a need for more experience. Some students attempt to participate in distance education without proper training with the tools needed to be successful in the program. Students must be provided with the training opportunities for on each tool that is used throughout the program. The lack of advanced technology skills can lead to unsuccessful experience. Schools have a responsibility to adopt a proactive policy for managing technology barriers. Time management skills and self-discipline in distance education is just as important as complete knowledge of the software and tools being used as for learning. The results of a study of Washington State Community College students showed that distance learning students tended to drop out more often than their traditional counterparts due to difficulties in language, time management, and study skills. Direct face-to-face -face interaction is a must for effective learning. Not all courses required to complete a degree may be offered online. Healthcare profession programs in particular require some sort of patient interaction through field work before a student may graduate. Students pursuing a medical professional graduate degree program participating in distance education courses favor face-to-face -face communication over professor-mediated chat rooms and our independent studies. Same is true for engineering programs since learning occurs through hands-on training. Practice is much more important than acquiring theoretical knowledge. There is a theoretical problem about the adoption, application of traditional teaching methods to online courses because online courses may have no upper size. <coughs> a negative link has been established between certain types of instruction in large classes and learning outcomes. Excuse me. There may also be institutional challenges. Distance learning is new enough that it may be a challenge to gain support for these programs in a traditional brick and mortar academic learning environment. Furthermore, it may be more difficult for the instructor to organize and plan a distance learning program, especially since many are new programs and their organizational needs are different from a traditional learning program. Additionally, Distance education offers industrial countries the opportunity to become globally informed. There are still negative sides to it. These include its cost and capital intensiveness, time constraints and other pressures on instructors, the isolation of students from instructors and their peers, instructors enormous difficulty in adequately evaluating students they never meet face to face and dropout rates far higher than in classroom based country courses. A more complex challenge of distance education relates to cultural differences between students and teachers and among students. Distance programs tend to be more diverse as they could go beyond the geographical boundaries of regions, countries and continents and cross cultural borders that may exist with respect to race, gender and religion. That requires a proper understanding and awareness of the norms, differences, preconceptions and potential conflicting issues. One of the most significant issues encountered in the mainstream correspondent model of distance education is transactional distance, which results from the lack of appropriate communication between learner and teacher. As I said, two-way two -way interaction is a must for learning to occur. This gap has been observed to become wider if there is no communication between the learner and the teacher and has direct implications over the learning process and future endeavors in distance education.
distance education providers began to introduce various strategies, techniques and procedures to increase the demand amount of interaction between learners and teachers. These measures More frequent face-to-face -face tutorials, increased use of information and communication technologies including teleconferencing and the internet were designed to close the gap in transactional distance. People in underdeveloped countries and developing countries are not conversant with online education until they get used to it, they find it rather tough since they are quite comfortable with uh, offline education, classroom teaching. Moreover, technology is still in its nascent stages. Besides, associated expenses for the requested equipment and accessories are beyond the financial capabilities of uh, most of the families. Supply of electricity is also inconsistent and quality is not reliable. Internet connectivity problems and low speed are also rampant. Medical doctors are advised to curtail usage time of all electronic gadgets, especially smartphones, since it has an adverse impact on our vision. The blue light emitted by electronic gadgets, whether it is uh, a smartphone, TV, computer, has a direct impact on melatonin hormone that stimulates st sleep and our biological clock, also known as circadian rhythm. This leads to sleep deprivation and allied stress, ultimately yields health complications and shorten the lifespan. One needs to exercise adequate caution for appropriate use of contemporary technology. As it is, majority of people are living sedentary life, spending too much time with the electronic gadgets, couch potatoes, and have become psychos leading a virtual life and addicted to electronic gadgets. Social isolation is really bad since by nature human beings are social animals. Social interaction with real people in a real world is a must. Debates, discussion in, uh, on topics like this can go on forever. Anyhow, let me call it a day. We'll meet again real soon. Some of the statements views expressed are solely mine based on limited knowledge over the gain over six decades. Always watch these videos with a closed caption. Subtitles are absolutely 100% comprehension as by my sincere recommendation, Zizi and Time Sofa. I know I rushed through to complete the presentation within 20 minutes max. This is the time limit I had set myself to retain the viewer's attention as a norm. I know nowadays I exceed this time limit since I make honest attempts to cover the selected topic more elaborately including so many intricate fine details, referring a wide variety of sources in particular Wikipedia quite extensively besides articles and books, books published recently. In addition, I add my own salt and pepper and masala based on my personal experiences so far in my life and also intuition, stayed home as much as possible to maintain social distancing attributed to pandemic novel COVID-19 and prolong your lifespan. Lead a healthy life, God alone can put a stop to natural and unnatural events, maybe bio war and cyber war like pandemics, which may lead to apocalypse and extinction of all sentient species on earth for no fault of this. All the best, resting, peace and